What's up everybody, D-Man back, welcome to a brand new video, and today we're going to be doing a breakdown for Pacific Rim Uprising's major plot twist, which means, yeah, spoiler warning for Pacific Rim Uprising, we will be talking about the biggest thing to happen in the movie, the biggest plot twist to happen, so if you haven't seen the movie, get on out of here, go see the movie, and then come back and check it out. So that was your official spoiler warning, today we're going to be talking about the deal with Dr. Newton Geisler in Pacific Rim Uprising. So I want to make a quick distinction here. In this video, I'm going to be talking about specifically what happens, how it's possible in terms of the Pacific Rim universe, and what that entails for the sequel, for the potential third movie in the trilogy. I'm not going to be talking about whether I think it's a good or bad decision. That'll be best saved for a spoiler review. In order to understand what happens with Newton Geisler in Pacific Rim Uprising, we have to first go back to the original 2013 movie. In Pacific Rim, we are told that if Newton drifted with a kaiju, there would be side effects. We don't actually see those side effects in the first Pacific Rim. The drift goes according to plan and everything's good to go. However, in Pacific Rim Uprising, we learn that Newton started to receive messages from the precursors shortly after his drift with the kaiju brain. Now we see those side effects, now we see those consequences. It's the second drift, the one he does with Goatleap, where this really kicks in for him. We know this because Goatleap had no idea that Newton got infected by the precursors during their mind melt, meaning that the infection started after the drift. Newton and Herman shared every thought and every memory with each other and with the precursors during this mind meld. If the infection had already started in Newton's brain, Herman would have surely found out. I think that the infection hit both Herman and Newton, but only worked on Newton because, number one, he drifted with the kaiju twice. One time was solo, meaning that he had more exposure to it than Herman ever did. And number two, he was a kaiju groupie before the drift even happened, meaning he will be more easily persuaded to join forces with the precursors because he already has a positive notion of the kaiju. Sure, he wants them dead, but he also appreciates them. Another indication that this started after the events of Pacific Rim deal with the way that Newton is portrayed at the end of the first movie. He is clearly the good guy. He's the hero trying to save the world. Del Toro never set him up to be the villain, meaning that during the events of the first Pacific Rim, he isn't the villain. He's not a bad guy. However, after the events of the first Pacific Rim, we learn that Newton obtains a kaiju brain through unknown means. We also know that Newton, before the events of the first Pacific Rim, Newton led the scientific team in terms of flesh regeneration and creation before joining the Jaeger program based on information provided at the time of the first Pacific Rim's release. This means that he could have grown the kaiju brain from nothing. So that could be one way that he got it. He could have also regenerated one of the brains. That theory is supported by the fact that her Herman notices a lot of kaiju DNA from Obsidian was created on Earth. And we also saw Obsidian Fury was piloted by a kaiju's brain, an artificial one. This is also what Newton uses to create the super kaiju at the end of the movie. More on that in a bit. The reason Newton has the brain and the reason there's that joke where he has something of a mental sexual relationship with it is because it works like a drug. It's not actually supposed to be like he's going to have sex with the kaiju brain like a lot of people interpreted it. No, that's not what it is. It's just a joke. What really is happening is it works like a drug. We know that the precursors can't maintain total control over those who drift with the kaiju brain. Otherwise, Herman would also be evil. So they need the person who they're controlling the mind of to repeatedly drift with the kaiju brain to, as Newton says in the movie, quote, pick me up. The drift with the kaiju strengthens the bond in Newton's mind and reinforces his connection with the precursors, allowing them to stay in command. If he can avoid the drift for long enough, his mind will most likely be free of the overlords. We know this because, once again, Herman is no longer mentally connected with the kaiju in this movie, like how Newton was in this movie and how Newton was when Otachi attacked in the first Pacific Rim. 
During the 10-year period between Pacific Rim and Pacific Rim Uprising, Newton infiltrates Shao Industries and becomes the lead of their research and manufacturing division. When there, he creates an experimental drone Jaeger under the table in Siberia using an old Jaeger factory from the early war days. The plan works and he loads the Jaeger with kaiju DNA and muscles so it can move quicker than other Jaegers and fight better. He also gives it a kaiju's brain so it will act independently of him and will attack under the Precursor's will. The Jaeger Obsidian Fury attacks in Sydney and is then defeated in Siberia after destroying the research and operations facility it was created in before Gypsy Avenger can investigate it. This is a way to cover up Newton's tracks. Also, during that 10 year period, these things happened. Newton manufactured Kaiju Jaeger hybrids, knowing that the Kaiju portion of them will take over, resulting in the destruction of PPDC bases across the world as they are delivered, and it will also result in multiple breeds is being opened up across the world. Before activating these Jaegers, he takes over the Japanese operation facility for Shao Industries. He produces kaiju parasites that have the ability to manipulate and generate flesh. Told you we'd come back to that. At the same time, he takes over Shao Industries HQ to ensure that he can infuse Shao's droned Jaegers with kaiju DNA so that the hybrids will be able to activate when he turns them on. That way the kaiju portion can officially take over. He also has to take over and become such a high-ranking official there because he doesn't want anyone else to know what he's doing. This way he can operate in secrecy, having all the control of all the machinery without anyone supervising him. By the way, that flesh regeneration and creation, that's what melds the three kaiju into one at the end of Pacific Rim Uprising. With all his plans set in motion, he is quickly found out by his old friend Herman, leading to one of the more interesting reveals about this entire plot line. Newton is not acting under his own free will. He's a passenger, going along with the Precursor's actions. They're the ones in control of his every move, and although he is trying to stop them mentally, his continued drift with the Kaiju's brain, slash his wife or whatever, results in Newton not being able to stop the Precursors and almost resulting in Herman's death. We know this because of the way Newton speaks during the scene when Herman officially confronts him about this. He keeps using the word, he's not strong enough, and then correcting himself, saying, I'm not strong enough. This is the Precursors trying to play the character of Newton. They're trying to be Newton. They're trying to convince Newton that he's acting under his own free will. They're saying he, and then they catch themselves. They turn it to I, because they want him to be fooled into thinking that he's under his own control. He also hesitates when killing Herman, because he doesn't want to do it. Newton Geisler, the real guy, doesn't want to kill Herman. And Herman even notices this, and that's why he saves his life when Shao shows up to kill him. At the end of the movie, after Newton's escaped and ran away and gotten away from everyone else, Nate Lambert finds and arrests Newton, who is hiding out in Japan, trying to watch the world end as a result of the kaiju self-destructing in Mount Fuji. We may do a full video breaking down that whole subplot, but as for now, we'll stick to the Newton storyline. Just before being captured, Newton is given a look of disapproval from the fusion kaiju, letting the audience know that the precursors don't totally like the kaiju groupie. After his capture, he's locked in a room where, in time, he will most likely get control of his mind back. I mean, he can't continue to drift with the kaiju's brain, so how is he going to strengthen that bond? Jake comes in and uses Newton as something of a messenger, letting him relay the message back to the precursors that the PPDC is going to make their own breach and they will be taking the fight to the kaiju next time. They're going to enter and invade the precursors' worlds, setting this up nicely for the sequel. If we get a Pacific Rim 3, which is all dependent on the box office at this point, fingers crossed, I really want one. What we'll most likely see is Newton revert back into being a good guy. He'll still be damaged, but I'm sure he'll be back into being his old or at least something of his old self from the first Pacific Rim. He'll probably help to stop the kaiju and destroy the Precursor's world. Also, I would assume that he'd have an in-depth knowledge of the Precursor's world. I don't think he's going to lose his memory as a result of reverting back into himself. I think he'll have an in-depth knowledge of it, and I think he'll be the one who helps them get into the kaiju's world, and also he'll be the one that helps them save the world, redeeming his character for what he does in this movie. That's just my prediction. Anyways, guys, that's the full situation behind Newton Geisler story in Pacific Rim Uprising with him being evil and everything like that. I hope you enjoyed. See you guys next time. D-Man out.